What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Talking Sports Podcast right here on YouTube, Apple Podcast, and Spotify. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel. Drop a like, drop a comment, and if you're on Apple Podcast or Spotify, follow, leave a review, or do whatever you do. If you're listening in the car, if you're watching at home, we appreciate it. We're kind of new here, right? We're kind of doing a new thing here. You're used to seeing my sidekick, JR. We're used to doing a little bit of a breakdown, our normal podcast. We, If you watched our NFL preview, and if you haven't, go, go check that out. We're transitioning to a different style of podcast, different type of, type of videos, shorter, quicker videos. Get to the point. Don't waste anybody's time. As you can tell by the title, we're breaking down some of the things of week two of the NFL season. We're going to talk about the Jets. They avoided a scare. The Ravens are 0-2 to start the year after losing to the Raiders today. And do the Jaguars have a Trevor Lawrence problem? That's what we're going to be talking about today. So hop right in. Make sure you drop a like, drop a comment, all that fun stuff. It was a crazy week two. The Chiefs came back and defeated the Bengals. The Steelers, in a slow, ugly fest, defeated the Bron- uh, Broncos. And obviously the Rams got rolled by the Cardinals. Some other great games. It was a great day. For week two, the Giants just kept kicking field goals, didn't get a win. Commanders kept kicking field goals to a victory. It was a great day of week two. So you make sure you guys drop a like, drop a comment, all that fun stuff. So let's get right into it, guys. The Jets avoid a scare. The Jets are coming off a week one Monday night performance where the whole country got to see them right in front of their screens. And look, if you kind of play at one o'clock or even if you play at four or four thirty, you kind of get pushed back if you struggle early on in the season. Not as many eyeballs are on you. If you're watching Red Zone, you see the team lose. You skip on to the next highlight because that's how Red Zone does it. But if you're in prime time, guys, you get right in front of everyone. Everyone sees your mistakes. Everyone sees your success. And the Jets struggled week one. They looked lackluster. They looked they didn't have any fight. Their defense looked bad. Aaron Rodgers didn't look great. He wasn't very mobile. Then they go into week two, right? And you think, okay, it's the 49ers. Who actually, I forgot to mention, got upset by the Vikings today. So that was something that we didn't expect coming in week two. But it's the NFL, so expect the unexpected. The Jets go into week two, and they're in desperate need of a win. I'm not saying it was a must win, but starting 0-2 historically is a tough start to make the playoffs. It's like 20 less percent to make the playoffs, or under 20% to make the playoffs if you start 0-2. The Jets go into Tennessee, a Tennessee Titans team that's coming off a heartbreaking loss to the Chicago Bears in week one, and the Jets find a way to win 24-17, right? I, if you can tell by the title, avoid a scare. This is one of the games where the Jets just needed to win and get out. Rodgers, 18 for 30, 176 yards and two touchdowns, no interceptions, interceptions, and was sacked twice. He wasn't perfect. He wasn't pretty. He wasn't great. It was good. It was good enough to get the job done, and that's probably all you're going to have to ask for him this year because the Jets roster is very good. Still wasn't super mobile, still busting off some rust, but I thought, Rodgers took a step in the right direction. Brees Hall, a little bit concerning on the ground, 14 carries for 62 yards, 4.4 yards per carry, a much better performance than his week one struggle. Still not all the way back. That Jets offensive line through two weeks has struggled to keep Rodgers upright for the most part and has struggled to generate any push on the offensive line when it came to the running game. Braylon Allen was the story of today. Seven carries for 33 yards and a touchdown. Also had a catch with seven catches for 52 yards. Two final things I want to mention with the Jets and moving forward. Garrett Wilson, we know Garrett Wilson, four catches for 57 yards. Started slow the season, getting better. He was good in week one, very average performance in week two. The second leader in receiving yards, a running back in Brees Hall, 52 yards. The third leading receiver, another running back with 23 yards. Mike Williams and Alan Lazard and Malachi Corley, the two, three, and four on this Jets team combined for four catches. That's an issue because you're not going to have that output by Brees Hall and Brown Allen every week. Maybe Brees Hall, but probably not Brown Allen every single week when it comes to the passing game. You're going to need other people to step up. They did not. So Mike Williams, Allen Lazard, and Malachi Crowley are the three keys to the Jets having a successful season. They got a quick turnaround Thursday night against the Patriots, but they need a second reliable option on the outside. And finally, Jermaine Johnson goes down with a ruptured Achilles. They don't have... Obviously, Bryce Huff, Hassan Reddick is sitting out. They traded away or they let go of John Franklin Myers, and now they most likely lose Jermaine Johnson for the foreseeable future, or if not the year. Hassan Reddick's price goes up, and the Jets' pass rush loses a little bit of spark, even though Cole McDonald had three sacks. Moving on, 
Raiders and Ravens. Wow. I think Minnesota versus the San Fran was probably the shock of the day. I would say this was the second shock of the day. Raiders defeat the Ravens 26 to 23. Something we saw last year and we've seen in the past, the Ravens. They tend, they tend to not put teams away or they tend to not convert on opportunities where they can put teams away. A couple, They settled for a couple field goals early against a bad team. You're at home. You want to put them away. They did not. And I think that came back to bite them, losing 26 to 23. Got to give props to the Raiders. Gardner Minshew, 30 for 38, 276 yards, a touchdown and interception, was sacked five times. So was under pressure all day. And they had no rushing game. The Raiders finished with 17 carries for 27 yards, which is a 1.6 clip on the ground. Zermir White, nine carries for 24 yards, 2.7 on the ground. And Alexander Madison, four carries for one yard. Do the math, people. That is 0.3 yards per carry. So Gardner Minshew, no running game whatsoever from any of his running backs. Devontae Adams and Brock Bowers showed up. Devontae Adams is a superstar. Nine catches for 110 yards and a touchdown. And then Brock Bowers, his rookie breakout game. This guy is a superstar. This guy is going to be a stud. He needs to be featured week in and week out. Nine catches for 98 yards on nine targets. Brock Bowers is a star in the making. But flip it over to the Ravens, right? Ravens start 0-2. Who's a heartbreaker to the Chiefs? They lost by this much. What I mean by this much, Isaiah Likely's toe was this much out of bounds. Then you're like, okay. We followed up with a home game against the Raiders, who looked abysmal, had no offense against the Chargers in week one. And the Raiders go into Baltimore and beat the Ravens 26-23. Lamar, through two weeks, week one was good, week two did not look like the MVP form. 21 for 34, 247 yards, a touchdown interception. If you're an MVP, and he has been twice, he was last year and a couple years ago, you have to win this game. Good teams find a way to win games. I don't know if. The Raiders, Raiders, excuse me. I don't know if the Ravens are a good team. You know what? Change that. We'll do a little in and out so I can put this on YouTube. Great teams find a way to win this game. I don't know if the Ravens are a great team yet. The Ravens are a good team. They might not be a great team. Moving on to the final thing I want to talk about. Do the Jaguars have a Trevor Lawrence problem? Jaguars are 0-2 to start the year. They blow a lead against Miami in week one. They followed up with a, a matchup with the Browns that favored the Jaguars in the sense that the Browns looked pretty awful in week one. And the Browns go into a looking humid, wet kind of Jacksonville and win 18-13. Trevor Lawrence's final stat line. I'm not even going to talk about the game. I'm going to talk about, do the Jaguars have a Trevor Lawrence problem? And I never thought I would ever have to say this coming out of Clemson, where he looked like a superstar national champion, looked like a future Hall of Famer. 14 for 30 for 220 yards, no touchdowns, and no interceptions. Sacked four times, finished with a passer rating of 71.5. He might have an issue here. They have weapons in Christian Kirk, who had one catch for negative one yards. They have Travis Etienne on the ground. They have Gabe Davis. They drafted Brian Thomas Jr., it might not be a weapon conversation. It might be a Trevor Lawrence conversation. They have lost seven straight regular season games where Trevor Lawrence has started. That includes back to last year where they had a one seed, not locked up. They had the division locked up. They blow it, and they miss the playoffs as a whole. Trevor Lawrence this year through two games, 382 yards for one touchdown, no interceptions. No interceptions is great. That one touchdown through two games is unacceptable. He's 13th in QBR. The Jaguars might have a Trevor Lawrence issue. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick episode. We'll try to do more of this for you guys moving forward. Week two was great. Week two was exciting. Week three offers even more. We'll be back next week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Like, comment, and subscribe to all talking sports content. Make sure you guys follow us on social media. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe on that place as well. Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And we, as always, we are sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. Make sure you guys use code TSB. Week two is in the wraps, and that is going to do it for us. Thank you.